Well, good morning, um, and thank you to Sages for the opportunity to present this exciting and informative online didactic at the meeting this year. The goals of this module are to teach and present data on cholecystectomy complications, including bile duct injuries, to teach trainees and practicing surgeons techniques to avoid bile duct injury. I will provide a bit of background on the problem at hand, and my co-presenters will discuss keys to safer cholecystectomies throughout their modules. So approximately 750,000 cholecystectomies are performed annually across the nation. Based on data from a nationwide inpatient survey, approximately 6 to 7% of lap coli patients experience a postoperative complication of note. Listed here are some of the most common complications seen in the postoperative period. These complications result in significant healthcare utilization, with one in 10 patients being seen in an emergency room within 30 days of operation and one in 15 requiring postoperative readmissions. That's upward of 37,000 readmissions annually. Here is a graph showing cholecystectomy uh, complication rates over time. There is a linear increase in complications from the late 90s through 2006. Though this set, data set only has data through 2006, other studies more recently suggest a similar trend over time, revealing that as a nation, we are not getting any better at the prevention of post-cholecystectomy complications. And listed here are the most common inpatient complications post-cholecystectomy. Note the overall 7% complication rate and a 0.5% mortality rate, a non-trivial number in an operation that is often viewed as routine. As suggested in the previous slides, there are a wide variety of postoperative complications that can be encountered after cholecystectomy, all of which warrant investigation and avoidance. Yet the most commonly discussed and feared is that of bile duct injury. The rate of bile duct injury is challenging to fully elucidate given it's reported based on whether or not you have a bile leak or a transection, and that reporting can be variable. Yet studies suggest the rate of bile duct injury requiring complex reconstruction is about four in 1,000. More recent studies suggest that this number may be slow, slowly improving, but major injuries still occur approximately 0.4% of the time. Some of the best data we have on this problem comes from Galrix, a Swedish registry on cholecystectomies and ERCPs. Galrix was founded in 2005 and is a nationwide repository of data that captures approximately 90% of all cholecystectomies performed in Sweden and aims to provide up-to-date information on outcomes and complications. This registry found the rate of all biliary complications to be 1.5% and injuries necessitating reconstruction at 0.4%. This table shows the distribution of these complications, with cystic duct leak or tangential injury being most commonly seen. Complete transection above or below the level of the bifurcation was seen in approximately 6% of all biliary injuries. Here is another study that provides further data on the situation. Data here is from a prospective multicenter study out of Belgium. This study of approximately 1,000 patients with acute cholecystitis demonstrated a complication rate of 5.5%, with biliary injuries seen in 1.2% of patients. Part of their analysis involved a study where operative technique, laparoscopic versus open, versus conversion to open. In cases that were converted to open procedure, the bile duct injury rate was much higher, 6% compared to 0.4% in cases which remained laparoscopic and 2.4% of all open cases. Here you see a similar trend for biliary fistula or any non-bile duct injury biliary complication, with injury being more common in the patients whose case was converted from lap to open. Very important to note that the patients who had a lap converted to open procedure, four of those injuries occurred after the conversion to open, confirming that open approach does not preclude injury. Bile duct injury is a significant problem in the United States as well. Here, a survey was sent to ACGME accredited surgeons where they were asked if they had encountered a bile duct injury during their practice. 1,600 surgeons responded and 34% reported a bile duct injury during their career, a humbling number for us all. Clearly, we know the physiologic ramifications of bile duct injury with reoperations and interventions, but complication and reoperation rate does not highlight the true burden of these injuries for our patients. Studies indicate that those who sustain a bile duct injury suffer from decreased quality of life and increased mortality. 
Those suffering BDI or bile duct injuries necessitate multiple reoperations and interventions postoperatively. These interventions diminish quality of life. Longer term complications associated with bile duct injury include fistula, abscess, and obstruction. Further data suggests increased mortality rate over time for those with a history of bile duct injury. Let's see. Um, and here you see the five more year mortality in patients with bile duct injury listed at 20.8%, per, which is higher than the predicted rate of 12% for this, the um, remainder of the population. Psychological evaluation of patients who sustained a bile duct injury versus those who did not demonstrate a significant difference in the psychological component of a patient's mental health. Physical and social domains were not significantly different between the two groups, those who sustained an injury and those who did not. But notably, those whose cases were going into litigation had greater psychological distress. Here is another study of patients with bile duct injury. There was a similar quality of life parameters in physical functioning, bodily pain, general health perception, vitality and social functioning, and mental health in those with bile duct injuries compared to controls. The mean emotional scores were far worse for those with bile duct injury. In long-term quality of life study, 50 patients with bile duct injury were evaluated four years post-procedurally. Multiple scales were used for analysis, including the Konosky performance scale, the physical and mental health components of the SS36 and the psychosocial adjustment to illness scale. The patients who sustained bile duct injury all scored lower than controls years post-injury. In another study, even with even longer follow-up, studied 403 patients and data was collected for years post-injury, comparing follow-up at 5.5 and 11 years. At 5.5 years, quality of life um, was significantly worse for those who had a bile duct injury compared to controls, which included those who had undergone an uncomplicated cholecystectomy and a non-operative cohort. When reassessed at 11 years, this disparity did not improve. Notably, of the patients who filed a malpractice claim, having their claim acknowledged and um, they noted improved quality of life. Beyond the clearly devastating physical and psychosocial effects of injury, bile duct injuries account for a huge amount of healthcare dollars. With the U.S. spending approximately $1 billion in caring for complications of patients post-cholecystectomy. 50% of that goes to medical care and the other half goes to medical legal fees. This is a huge burden and is a key component of medical malpractice claims across the nation, with 20% of money paid to plaintiffs being secondary to BDI, bile duct injury complications. And that's gonna ask questions, which I will just answer for us quickly. Yeah, I don't think it will let you skip it. Yeah, we can do will that. it? Okay. Yeah, you can just close out. Can you just close out? Yeah. And then there's a summary. So, but to summarize, major bile duct injury still composes 3,000 injuries a year in the U.S. alone. The devastating complications affect the patient and the surgeon. We still have a great deal of work to do on furthering the safety of cholecystectomy for our field and the patients that we serve. This module has highlighted the problem at hand, and the next modules will focus on ways to increase the safety of cholecystectomy to work towards a future with less jarring statistics. Thank you.